cleanses your mind. When your mind has been cleansed, your life is holy. If you are not taught who Christ is, you cannot live an effective Christian life. There is no other honor greater than that of sonship. Worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil. Relationship with God is a gift. Fellowship is a choice. The true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others. What you pursue is an expression of what you desire. Where can I go to escape your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Knowing the presence of God. The dimension of God that you experience is a function of the measure of your revelation of God. Which means that you are responsible for how much of God you will experience. Because how much of God you experience does not depend on God. It depends on you. So any man that puts pressure in the things of the spirit so you can lay hold of the dimensions of God will experience more of God than other people. It's not enough to come to church. You must desire to give yourself fully to the things that make for your spiritual growth so you can lay hold of the dimensions of God available for you in Christ. There are people whose pride is in being a church member. I go to this church. This man is my pastor. I'm a Christian. I am baptized. I take communion. All those things don't matter in the realm of the spirit. What matters in the realm of the spirit is your knowledge. So the dimension of God you experience is a function of the measure of your revelation of God. The measure. So if I want to see more of God, what should I do? I should go to know more of him. Daniel 11.32 They that know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. So we understand from scripture again that exploit is a function of knowledge. Any dimension of greatness you desire can be made possible by your pursuit of the knowledge of God. So, the knowledge of God in the heart of man is what activates the possibilities of heavy realities on earth. The things which you read in the scripture, the things which you think are only in heaven, they can become possible to you if you have knowledge of God. He said, with God, all things are possible. He also said, unto him who believes, all things are possible. Look at that. With God, all things are possible. Then unto him who believes, all things are possible. So, the one who believes is brought into a dimension where the things that God can do, he can do. Leave your answer, I shall never be a failure. So, it's important therefore you go for knowledge. Go for the things that increase your understanding of God. We live in times where darkness is covering the earth. But no matter the thickness of darkness, it cannot overwhelm nor understand light. And what is light is the word of God. Are you getting me? So the knowledge of God in the hearts of man is his greatest advantage and security in the midst of the darkness of the world. What you know of God, it doesn't matter what comes your way. What will sustain you in the day of trial is what you know about God. And God has committed himself to you knowing him by giving you pastors. God has made available the scripture, the spirits and shepherds. These are all systems through which men are ordained to enter the knowledge of God. So you have the scriptures, you have the spirits, and you have who? The shepherds. All the Bible, the Holy Spirit, and pastors have one assignment from God. Our assignment is to bring you into the knowledge of God. So, the efficiency of a ministry is not measured by miracles, but the dimension of God's knowledge given to men. It's not how many prophecies I give. It's not how many miracles I make. The efficiency of the ministry is not measured by the amount of miracles by the, but by the dimension of God revealed. Not the miracles I've done, but the God I've made you know. Are you hearing me? Now, it is important you understand it because I want to bring all of you to a place where you know God on personal terms. Where you can hear his voice and he hears your voice. Well, you don't just say, I'm a Christian. You can make boast of your God because you know that you know him and you know that he knows you. So, when we teach all these things, our, our intention is to bring you to know him. Not to know us. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
we can only know of God what is revealed by the spirits and the scriptures. And there is so much of God revealed in the scriptures that men have not yet had understanding of. So my desire as a pastor is through the teachings I'm giving you is to bring you to the place where you know God. When you know God, what, what enters your heart is stability and assurance. Yeah, I don't know if you have it will happen. I know it will happen. Knowledge of God brings predictability. I mean, things can become, you can predict what will happen. Faith cannot fail. Love cannot fail. So there is no man that walks by faith or in love that can fail. So when you know God, you know the outcome of what you are doing. It's nothing like, man, not nothing will happen tomorrow. Forget that. When, listen to me. By doing the right thing today, you can know that tomorrow will be right. The power to control tomorrow is in the choices of today. I get what I'm saying. I said the power to control the outcome of tomorrow is in the choices and decisions of today. So whatever I'm doing now is actually structuring my tomorrow. So what should I do now? I should know God. Are you hearing me? So one of the things which I want to bring to your knowledge today is the knowledge of the presence of God. We read in Psalms 139 verse 7. He said, why shall I go to escape from your presence or where shall I hide from you? So we understand this, that David, when he wrote that scripture, he had an accurate understanding of the presence of God. There are people who don't know God's presence. For example, there was a prophet called Jonah. God sent Jonah to Nineveh to preach. He said, and Jonah ran from the presence of God. He, he had not have a perfect understanding that God is everywhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you hearing me at all? So, it's important you know his presence. Why am I saying this to you? God is everywhere. But only those who know and understand his presence will enjoy his manifestation. God is everywhere. But only those who know and understand his presence will enjoy his manifestation. So, it's not enough to say, I, I know say God day. Even thieves know that God day. Even witches know that God day. What is the difference? By this understanding today, you are going to enjoy what I call a kind of difference and safety in your life. That the things that happen to others will have no power to happen to you. Why? Because you know God's presence. Are you hearing me? May the Lord give you understanding today. May the Lord give you insight into his presence Amen. glory be to God now let me give you some facts about the knowledge of God's presence number one the knowledge of the presence of God disciplines you to walk in the fear of God show me Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 to 29 wherefore we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. With what? Reverence and what? Number one, the knowledge of the presence of God disciplines you to walk in the fear of God. The reason why many of us cannot walk in the fear of God is because we don't have the knowledge of his presence. Once you have this understanding that God is with you, it will, the way you act will change. So number one, the knowledge of the presence of God disciplines us or disciplines you to walk in what? The fear of God. The man of God began explaining, he listen, the kind of kingdom we have received is a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Because of that, because of the presence we have received in God, let us serve him with reverence and godly fear. So he was talking to people that were not serving God with fear. And the reason why they served him the way they loved is because they were not conscious of his presence. There are things you will not do, no matter where you find yourself, where you become conscious of his presence. Number two, the knowledge of the presence of God makes you committed in doing the things that please God. John 18, 29. And he that sent me is with me, my father had not left me alone, for I do always the things that please him. Look at that. He that sent me has not left me. My father, why is my father with me? So, because Jesus was conscious of the presence of God. He said, every 
thing I do is the thing that pleases him. You will be conscious of walking in love, of showing mercy, of forgiving people. Because you know, if I know that prayer pleases God, and I know that God is present, I'll give myself to prayer. The things that we do in our life is, is a function of our knowledge. Once you enter the understanding of his presence, it will make you committed in doing the things that please him. You will not be committed in doing the things that bring pleasure to your flesh. So there are things you desire to do, but you will not do them because you know they are not con conducive to his presence. The kind of life you will live both publicly and privately will depend on the quality of your knowledge of his presence. Number three, the knowledge of the presence of God strengthens our confidence and assurance to overcome trials. Psalms 23 verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For why? Why don't I fear evil? For you are with me. So what do, what do we understand? The reason why I do not fear evil is not because I'm strong in myself. It's because you are with me. Psalms 91 verse 14. He said, I will be with him in trouble. Have you ever seen that? I will be with him in trouble. So when you're in trouble, where is God? In the trouble. Was he not in the fire? Before Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were there, was he not in the fire? Was he not in the lions then? Isaiah 43, 1 to 2. He said, fear not. When you go through the fire, you shall not be burnt. Why? I am with you. So there are people that go through challenges and they panic. One of the ways to measure your knowledge of God. If you still fear today, the same things you feared last month, you have not grown in knowledge. Once you grow in knowledge, the sign is that there are certain fears you overcome. If the kind of things that frightened you last year can still frighten you this year is a sign that from that time to now you have not grown in your knowledge of God. There are certain symptoms on your body that should no longer move you. Certain dreams, certain attack, but you are afraid of the environment, afraid of you hear news, you are afraid. You see dream, you are afraid. Symptom, you are afraid. These are signs that your knowledge has not increased. He said, fear not. Why? For I am with you. When you go through the water, you shall not be swallowed. When you go through the fire, you shall not be burnt. He was trying to make them understand that your security, your safety is in me. My confidence is in you. He went before them by day. Eh? In front, as a pillar of cloud. By night, as a pillar of fire. Once you find your confidence shaking in the midst of trial, is a sign that you have lost focus of his presence. Once you, once you maintain the consciousness of his presence, there is no trial that will shake your conviction. There is no fear. People threaten you, I will kill you. You, you, you ask yourself, but how will you kill me? That is, you come to a place where, it's like they tell me, uh, listen, for example, if they tell a man you'll be pregnant and the man is afraid, that man should have a mental problem. I say, hey, I'm afraid of what is it? I'm afraid I don't want to be pregnant. A man, I'm afraid I don't want to be pregnant. What do we think about that man? We think that he's a man who does not know what it means to be a man. Same thing, you are a child of God. You need to know what it means to be a child of God. Shout, I know who I am. I'm seeing a cloud of glory over this building now. I speak therefore by the power of the Holy Spirit. May you be overwhelmed in the glory of God. Amen. May you be overwhelmed by the power of God. Amen. May you be overwhelmed in the glory of God. Amen. May you be overwhelmed by the power of God. Amen. May you be overwhelmed by the Spirit of God. Amen. Shout an amen that is mighty. Amen. Let us see Psalms 91 verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. He said, I will be with him in trouble. And what will I do? What will I do? But notice, I will be with him where? Listen, can I say something that you should not be angry? I prophesy to you. 
God will not come to take you out of that trouble. Amen. Say amen. amen. It means you understand. He is not coming because he's already there. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. God is not coming to take you out of barrenness. God is not coming to take you out of sickness. God is there with you and he is, he is not coming. He's already taking you out because he's there. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for you and with me. Where is he? In the valley. Say, I'm never alone. Say, I can never be alone. Shout it louder now. So, what is the presence of God? The presence of God is his existence, availability, and commitment in regards to all his creation. The presence of God is his existence, availability, and commitment in regards to all his creation. What is the presence of God? His existence, availability, and commitment in regards to all. Scripture there is Psalms 139, verse 7 to 12. Where can I go to escape your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in, in hell, show you hell, you are there. Notice it's everywhere. If I live at the eastern horizon, settle at the western limit, even there, your hand will lead me. Your right hand will hold on to me. If I say surely, the darkness will hide me and the light around me will become night. Verse 12. Even the darkness is not dark to you. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the night shines like the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. Glory! You are Yahweh. 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 Alpha Omega. You are Yahweh. Alpha, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Alpha Omega. So what is the presence of God? His existence, his availability, and his commitment in regards to all his creation. So, this, on the, this definition gives us three insights about God's presence, alright? Number one is his omnipresence. Someone say omnipresent. I believe, who knows what it means omnipresent? It means everywhere. All right. Psalms 139, verse 7 to 12. We just already now. He said, Even if I go to hell, you are there. In verse 12, he said, Even if I hide in darkness, darkness shines like day. He said, Darkness and light are the same to you. So nothing is dark for God. Like he said, For God, darkness and night is only on the earth. Darkness and day is only on the earth. It, when God looks, the, for all God sees is light. Are you get what I'm saying? 
Do you know there are animals that can see in the night? If animals can see in the night, what about God? Now, the omnipresence of God speaks of his presence everywhere. Which means even in hell, God is present. Everything that God has created is in him. There is nothing outside of God. Even Satan, wherever he is, God is there. Omnipresence. There is no place where God is absent. Are you getting me? Now I want you to understand what I'm saying very well. So, this is the first dimension. This dimension of his presence is, it is enjoyed by all his creation. It is his omnipresence that causes rain to fall. Causes dry season, rainy season. All those things is his omnipresence. So, every creation of God has access to this one. How many creations? How many creations? Number two is the indwelling presence of God. Show me 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Read, as God has said, I will dwell where? Where? So I call it what? Indwelling presence. You read John chapter 14 verse 10. Jesus said, the father who dwells in me. The indwelling presence of God, only those who are born again have access to that one. Every creation has access to what? His omnipresence. Only his children have access to what? Indwelling presence. So if you are a child of God, what do you have? Indwelling presence. This is what is in you that has made you a child of God. This is the sign and the seal that you belong to God. The indwelling presence of God is what is given to all his children. Number three. The manifest presence of God. Let us see Acts chapter 10 verse 38. And how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. What did God do? Anointed you with what? Read. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was not in him. Someone say with. The manifest presence of God is only for his servants. So you must be a servant to have this one. Which means if you want to enter this dimension, what should you become? Serve God. Are you getting me? If you read um, Exodus 13 from verse 21, 22. He said God was walking with them by day as a pillar of cloud. And by night as a pillar of fire. Now, it is that, that is what manifests. For example, if I'm preaching and I am walking, you see I enter, people begin to fall. What is that? Manifest presence. You understand the difference now? Now, this one is, comes by the anointing. People can have indwelling presence. And they die in accident. Because in that dimension, he is in you. Your body can be afflicted and crushed and you die. But with manifest presence, he is in physically. Which means he has taken over your atmosphere. And he begins to operate physically like, they call it the angel of God's presence. Are you getting what I'm saying? So here, yeah, there was an accident. Some Christians died. Another one did not die. The one who did not die is because of what? No. Thank you. What saved him? Not indwelling. Indwelling presence is your assurance for eternal life. That if you die, it will carry you to heaven. But indwelling presence may not help you on earth. You need manifest presence. That is why when you want to travel and you come and I say, the Lord be with you. I am not saying indwelling. I'm saying manifest. So now I'll tell you, God go with you. It's not that God was not first there. God was going, but it was, if only God goes in you, you can have trouble on the way. He must go with you. Someone say manifest presence. So this dimension now is only for who? Servant. Omnipresence for who? All creation. 
Indwelling presence for who? For who? His children. Manifest presence. So imagine me that I have all the three. You, you have how many? Talk your true. You have manifest presence. <laughs> so, what do we need to have omnipresence? You just need to be created. Immediately God creates you. His presence is with that creation. That's why even Satan, God's presence is with him. He's nothing he can do. He's created. What do you need to have in dwelling presence? You must receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Lord, yeah, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I come into my, what is that? Indwelling. But now, when it comes to manifest, it has principles. So, the things I will show you now are the, are the things you must do for manifest presence. Because I, I repeat, for indwelling presence, it is not by prayer. It is not by fasting. It's by what? Listen, when you are a child of God, even if you go and fornicate, indwelling presence can never go. There is nothing a human being can do and you become an animal. If you are born a human, you will die a human. Once you are born of God and that indwelling presence come, no matter your sin, no matter your mistake, it stays. In fact, if you live a lot in sin, God will allow the devil kill your body so he can save your spirit. He will take you fast. But there is nothing you can, once you are born of God, he said, I will never leave you, no. Wait till that one is what? Listen, leave, forsake. Leave means indwell. Forsake, manifest. God may never leave you. But there are times it may appear as if he has forsaken you because you did not walk rightly. So, no matter whether you pray or you don't pray, indwelling presence. Whether you don't fast, is there. No matter the kind of life you live, whether you don't come to church, it is there. It does not depend on your activities. It is a function of what? Being born of the Holy Spirit. So, if I'm talking about, so, you know I know the three kinds. Number one, omnipresence. What does it mean? Who has access to that one? Number two, who has access to that one? Let me see your hand if you have the indwelling presence of God. I feel like putting my legs up even. Because I, I have. Let me see your hand if you have indwelling presence. Those who hands are not up, it means you need to receive Christ. Hands down. Let me see those who have manifest. Some people whose hands are not up. <laughs> they say, well, we will see him, we will see him. Do you know that the manifest presence is gifted by the anointing? If I come and come, this is the child of God. Not so? It's a child of God. So, by being a child of God, he has what? Indwelling. But friend, you can have indwelling presence and causes tie you down. Yes. Because it's in your spirit. Your body is in a different dimension of suffering. Yes, it is in your spirit. You, it, you can be poor, you can be sick, you can fail, be ineffective on earth. Now, if I come to him and, and let me be, I anoint him with oil or I lay my hand, what I am gifting him is the manifest presence. From the time the hands are laid, something begins to operate in his physical atmosphere. There is no hands I can lay to change anything about the indwelling presence. It come, that one does not increase, it does not reduce. But manifest presence can increase and reduce. If you worship God, it increases not the indwelling presence. What? Manifest. Because manifest presence is an overflow of indwelling. It begins to overflow. And it can be hard. They came to arrest Jesus. He said, who are you looking for? They said, we are looking for Christ. He said, when he said, I am he, they fell. Wait till he pushed them. Manifest. After he saw that if they keep falling, they will not kill him. If he does not die, he will not be saved. He, for them to catch him, he had to switch off the light. He said, okay, when I come home. They could hold him. Who could hold him? Jesus. 
the first time they came to kill him, he said they put him, you, you write in the book of Luke, they put him at the cliff, he passed among them, they don't see him. You, you write it now, say they, they took him outside. He just, Jesus look at them, everybody freeze like this with their stone. He passed. That's the person you want to catch. That is why Judas was a, was a good businessman. Judas knew that they can never kill Jesus. Because he has seen many times where they came to kill Jesus and they could not touch him. So Jesus wanted to collect money from the Pharisees, then sell Jesus, and when Jesus not die, he says, sorry, sir. That is what the Bible says. When they slapped Jesus and blood came out, Judas said, hey, I have betrayed innocent blood. Judas never knew that that grand friend had blood. The kind of manifest presence, he saw Jesus walking. He said, this man cannot have blood. And he was right. Yet Jesus said, no man take my life from me. <laughs> he said, I lay it down myself so I can pick it up. You cannot pick it where you kept it. Who are you? Someone say manifest presence. Manifest. Shout it louder. Manifest. The manifest presence can be controlled by your confession. Yes. The things you say can control the, the, the intensity of the, the presence. Are you hearing what I'm teaching now? Before you go out in the morning, charge up. So you can say, you, you look at the morning, Father, thank you. As I'm going, as I'm coming, my is blessed. Thank you for you talking about my, my, my army is blessed. My coming is blessed. Thank you, Lord Father. Go be, before me, go, go behind me, go on the left, go on the right. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for your mercy. Great grace, glory. Thank you, Lord. You are with me. What is that? No. You are going for a business contract. You enter the room, Bakatakai, Ramada. As you enter the interview room, you seize the atmosphere. Makataba. Because listen, a charm is what attract a bot a physical presence of demons when they say you are you don't have presence it means you have indwelling but physically you are dry the first principle to to walk in the manifest presence of god ministering to the lord give me acts chapter 13 verse 1 and 2 and they ministered to the lord and fasted the holy ghost said stop when did the holy ghost speak as they do you know what is ministering to the Lord? Let me show you. Give me Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with what? With the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in what? In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Stop. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. How far? And Omega Ah Kaba, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh, Yahweh. Listen, notice I'm not praying. What am I doing? I am ministering to the Lord. Lord, you are great. Notice what I'm saying. You, 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 not. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. That's praise. Uh, Miss Lord is, you are. You, you are great. What a great God you are. Those who complain do not understand the power of ministering to the Lord. When you complain, you are ministering to Satan. See my house, see my life, see my shoe. No, minister to the Lord. Yahweh, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh. Alpha. Do you know what I'm doing? I am using to the Lord. Rakaba He said, build yourself in your most holy faith. Hiya. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Building yourself up. What does that mean? So when we begin to speak in the spirit, what happens? Manifest presence. That's mission to the Lord. He said, He that speaketh in tongues, speaketh to who? To God. Do you know what kills the presence? Manifest presence. Complain. There's some of you now in your home, there's no longer manifest presence. So picking the sick anytime, anyhow. Because you're, 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 you have turned your house into a complaint and gossiping center. You gossip the pastor, gossip the church, talk against people, complain. No! Let your home be a home of worship and you will see presence will overwhelm it. When you minister to the Lord, only Him is in that place and you. Yahweh, you are Yahweh. Listen, when did it start? You wash you wash the plant with hey. and when he comes there, that's when you feel like crying. You break. Sometimes when he comes, you feel unworthy. You start repenting. 
You even repent of what you are repented of. <laughs> Sometimes it comes and you just have a certain joy or you have a kind of confidence. Number two is by fellowshipping with the saints. With the saints. Matthew 18, 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in where? In the midst or in them. So, what is here now? Manifest. What did you bring to church? In dwelling. When we come together, what happened when we come like this? Manifest. That is why it is easier to say, no, I can be in my house and worship God. You are not right. That is why it is easier to be healed in this kind of prayer atmosphere than in your house. Because when we come together in his name, what happens? We activate the manifest presence. You see, once you understand what I'm teaching, you will never miss a church service. If you are sick, beg your family to drag you to church. You are entering the atmosphere where all things are possible. Why are you not coming to church? I didn't come to church because my stomach was spinning. But it's not. Now, which man is sick near go to hospital? You want to wear When you are sick, you are oppressed. Why didn't you come to church? My heart was not fine. So is it by staying in the house that the heart became fine? You come to the presence. So, what activates manifest prayer number two is what? Fellowship with the saints. So when we come like this, what is there? <laughs> now, just, just imagine, imagine, imagine. Imagine what will be. Kai! Imagine, no. Oh. Hmm. Let's say, 10 billion of us in heaven. You are Yahweh, Jesus. <laughs> Ayah. Imagine how you will feel. Like, I don't know why we will cry or go glad. I want you to imagine. Imagine how worship will be in heaven. You cannot imagine that kind of worship if you have not begun it here. Just think about it. You want to turn. You say, you see Abraham. You are Yahweh, Yahweh. Once you say Elijah. You are Yahweh. David answer. You are Yahweh. Peter take. Alpha. Paul say Omega. Hey. Mayakai. Ay. It's on everywhere. Then there's no tears again. There's no I am sick. Everybody, we are in the life of God. In his presence. Hi. Child. Well, they glad. But can I tell you something? The manifest presence can make you taste heaven on earth. That thing you feel when you worship from your heart. Oh, don't miss service. Don't miss service. Do you know that? Come, brother. Listen, listen to what I'm going to show you. Look at this time. This brother, let's say he has a problem. And he's praying for solution. And he's not getting an answer. You know why? Indwelling presence may not be able to solve the power fighting him. What should we do? He should call for this his brother. Call for this is other brother. He now says, wherever two or three are gathered, what happens? As they come, them three, who comes here? Manifest presence. When they begin praying, whatever two or three shall agree in my name, who will do it? Manifest presence. Now, the same thing he prayed and there was no answer. As we all gather and begin to pray for him, answer come now. When Satan wants to destroy a Christian, he makes him ignore the guardian of the saints. Sometimes the answer of your prayer is looking for a prayer partner. Wherever to now, which means, okay, that is, can I tell you, let me tell you something God told me. One day I was praying, the Lord said to me, he said, the first purpose of marriage is a system to create a manifest presence for life. Once a man is married, it's not two. And wherever two or three are gathered in his name, so if me and my wife, we gather in his name, what happens there? You cannot be praying alone, pray, pray alone. Pray. Some things will not handle alone. No. You have know. people. Friend, if you have an issue, meet the prophet the Lord sent to you. Let me say, there's nothing I can do by myself. There are things which need people to gather. When they stone Paul, people gathered. Paul came back to life. Ah, my prophet, I want us to pray together. Once we come like this, Give me your hand. I will hold our hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. What happens here is that he was praying to God. Remember what I said. The things that happen depends on the presence. 
But there are things that in indwelling presence is only for salvation and eternal life. When it comes to healing, deliverance, all those things, is more of manifest presence. But there is a dimension where indwelling presence can work for healing. He says, if the spirit that dwell in you, that one is a different level, that one is high. But now, so he needs something to happen. He needs a breakthrough, uh, 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 maybe a favor from the Lord. Understand the power of me and you agreeing in prayer. We pray together. That's why Satan likes this unity. When pastors fight themselves, it is a city that suffer. Because if we gather and pray, we are going to bring an atmosphere down. Never be ashamed to meet a brother, a prophet. Prophet, pray with me. Whether we are praying to any time, let's keep praying. Let nothing ever make you turn your back from the fellowship of the saints. Number three, obedience to God. John 8, 29. And he that sent me is with me. He has not left me because I do the things that please him. Do you know I can have a service and God tells me, wear, wear a white shirt that day. It's on the same day, God tells me I wear white. You know why? You dream that you met me. In your dream, I wore a white suit. And God brings you to church. Because God wants to show you a sign. God has to come to me to wear a white suit. If I disobey what I think is a simple instruction, I have denied the presence for that service. So I will come in that service and I will struggle to do the work because the manifest presence is not available. You must understand the place of obedience. There are many of you, there are things that God asked you to do. God told you, every two o'clock be praying. God told you, go to orphanage, do this for the pastor. Listen, when you delay obedience, you deny presence. Never forget what I'm saying now. What you have to do that the Lord instructed you, do it quick. When God asks you to do something, it's because there's something more he wants to do for you. When God wants to give to you, he makes you give. When God wants to do something, he makes you do something. This is how the Lord operates. Obedience. What's the benefit of knowing the presence of God? Number one. Joy. Someone say joy. joy. Psalm 16 verse 11. He says, in your presence there is fullness of joy. Number two. Rest. Exodus 33 verse 14. He said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Joy. We you are always happy. Nobody is sad in his presence. Number three. Distinction. Exodus 33 verse 15 to 16. He said, my presence will go with you and I will, I will make a difference. Number one, joy. No, number one, joy. Number two, rest. Number three, Number one, number two, number three. Where people pass and die with this presence, you pass, nothing happen. He said difference. He said my presence will make distinction a difference. Where people go and they are rejected, who will reject you? In Psalm 97 verse 5, he said at his presence, the mountain tremble. But mountain. Mountain. So, there are demons in front there. Before you arrive there, they don't clear. Not because they fear you. They fear who is working with you. Ah, yeah. Some of the difference. The difference in the, what we create, our distinction is by what? Not by certificate. In fact, some of you don't care if I went to school or not. My certificate does not help you. Yeah, way. You are Yahweh. Stand on your feet. 